What did one saggy boob say to the other saggy boob? I mean, can we do this? Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life, answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, do you need to peel a potato? You'll... Yeah. Mm. It um, depends um, if you're doing skin on yeah, wedges. wedges. Yeah. Jinx, one, two, three. <laughs> And am I too old to buy a Where's Wally book for myself? I could never find Wally. <laughs> what? Is that because Wally was doing the searching? No, wait, I don't get that. <laughs> I do not get that. Because that... you're the Wally. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking proof, I am. <laughs> yes. Well, it's all right. Ben didn't get it either. So there we go. <laughs> Very good. Shake my hand. Thank you. Jesus. That was good. You remember, like, I right, did. It. <laughs> it's not difficult. It's like an inspirational quote. It's like, if, if you can't find Wally. If you can't find Wally, you are the Wally. Look, at, look in a mirror. Yeah. In America, they call him Wally, don't they? Uh, where's Waldo? Waldo. Yes. That's it. Wally. I, I don't know why. I could never find him. And what should you do if you've accidentally <laughs> sexted your boss? But we're not usual like the answer, are we, William Hansen, <laughs> the UK's leading etiquette expert? No, we're not, Jordan North. I'm more French Brie, you're more Derry Lee. Oh, great. And that's from George Martin, who clearly has... Who wrote st- Game of Thrones? <laughs> he's, he's got some free time on his hands now. Is that George Martin off of Game of Thrones? <laughs> I think so, Is he a yeah. Diva? <laughs> yeah. Christ, that's one of the best ones we've had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> George R. Martin. Jesus. Yeah, I think that's from him. Thank you, George. Fair play. It's a, wow. I've, I've never seen an episode. Yeah, you're going to try and make it Hattie, <laughs> Hattie got me a book from a birthday years ago and I never got around to reading it, but I love the series. Yeah, I, I, mm, I don't know. It's all a bit sexual and... It's not. It's got dragons in. And, well, yeah, I, I don't think the dragon... I'm not going to lie to you, there is a lot of shagging. I had yeah. to start watching it with my mum. Oh. Yeah, about when I lived Gosh, there. has it been on for that long? Yeah. You were watching it when you were back home? I first watched it, right, when I was on Richard Bacon's show as a researcher on Five Live, wow. do you remember? And uh, my editor said to me, you need to, we've got some show that's massive in America, and we've got two guests on, and you need to watch a couple of episodes of it. And we got sent, like, the DVDs. I had to, that dates it. And I had, to, I had to write some questions about it, and I watched the first two episodes, and I come back in office, and I've just watched one of the best shows I've ever seen, and I watched in, like, Two, three weeks, a binge series, the whole two oh, wow. series. Gosh. Yeah. And have you done the new one? A couple of episodes, yeah, yeah. on the iPad. Yeah. Good. Right. Anyway. Uh, uh, right. Who should we toast to? Well, I think we toast... We, I mean, we, we had some great examples in the, um, in the weekend release. <coughs> oh! Just... It, we're on a ban still. Oof! We're still on a ban. Christ! We had some great examples in the weekend release of some Wendy's and potato peelers, so I'd like to taste all of them and everyone else who's done it as well that we may not have mentioned yet on this podcast. Oh, oh my God, you've just splashed on the table, Jordan. Oh, God. I'm not kidding, thanks. Ben, can we use your hoodie? Ben. <laughs> we need to do another pissed episode soon, don't we? We do, yes. We haven't got proper piss. Let's have a look. At the bus stop today, coming in, because I had to get the bus because the Elizabeth line was down, um... I, well, I got the bus for about five minutes to the um, central line. Bus. Buzz. Buzz. I got bus. Um, and just there. Thank you, Ben. Cheers, Ben. You missed a bit. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, should we do it next Friday, but I'm on Loose Women. <laughs> <laughs> to get paid. Oh, no, I could record. Oh, no, I'm not. Then I'm, I'm also in Portugal, so no. Oh, okay. Um, Christ, what's that you've used? It's a Dettol wipe, I oh, think it's it used. Nice. Mm. Carry on. Um, where were we? It's going to be one of those episodes. Yeah. yeah. Where were we? What were we talking I about? I don't then? know. <laughs> I feel it was quite sad. Oh, uh, getting pissed. No. Spilling. Spilling. Junk. Wendy's. Potato peelers. What were we on about then? Anyway. I have absolutely no idea. Oh, no, anyway. You... <laughs> Christ. Um, oh, my God. It was your birthday last week. Yeah. And now your memory's gone. I know, it That's has. what happens with ageing. Isn't it? I got an air fryer. You got an air fryer? I know, welcome How to... How old are you? Welcome to your 30s. I've been, like, hinting for one for ages, so I got one. And have you... Is it is it a double basket one? I beg your pardon? Has it got two baskets or just one? Uh, I 
I've not used it yet, so okay. I don't know. No. It's going to be one of those. I've wanted one for ages, and I'm probably never going to use it. I'm going to make Yorkshire puddings in them. Oh, for God's sake. I'm going to have one more attempt. <laughs> one more try. You can't even do them in a conventional oven. You're going to really struggle in an air fryer. Oh, cold. I'll, yeah, I've got an air fryer. I was chuffed to bits. Well, I'm, I'm told they're very good, mm. so... And they save on electricity and thus yeah, money. So they're all, we're all for that. Anyway, uh, who are we toasting to? Well, all the Wendy people. All so the people that are doing Wendy. Can I borrow your potato peeler? All to them. Keep the videos coming in. It goes like this. Wendy! Get away your potato peeler! Right, you get yourself off, Ben. <laughs> As always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexwithmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message. Um, on Instagram at Sex and My Boss, or you can write to William, who promises a handwritten reply in his own letter paper. The address is on the website, sexandmyboss.com. You know, last week you had to rush off to meet an earl. Mm. I've, Are you meeting a, a duke? I'm not meeting a duke. I've got to go. A marquis? On. No, I've got to be back because I'm getting my settee delivered at quarter to 12 this afternoon. By an earl? Not by an earl, no. Right, okay. So, yeah. Very similar. I'm stressed because I don't know if it's going to get through from Have door. you put some cones out the front with delivery imminent? No. Do you need to do that? <laughs> Is it a sofa that's a direct replica from Sandringham House? No. no. I'm stressed. Will I'm... you be having a three-piece sweet warming party? No. Already... What are all these references to? I don't know. Think. The palace. Mm. Keep up appearances. Oh, okay. There's a whole episode where she has a new sofa delivered. And it's... it's actually one of the best episodes Is of Keep Up Appearances. A... What is it? A replica? From... It's a direct replica from one at Sandringham House. Although it turns up and it looks nothing like they would even have at Sandringham House. But yeah. anyway. Okay. Sorry. So, yeah, I've got to rush off to get this settee. Nice. Shh, if it don't get through that door, I don't know what exactly. colour are we going. Describe the sofa. I think it's... Is it a two-seater? It's green. It's green. Mm. Green. And is it a uh, three-seater? Four? It's, uh, yeah, three-seater. Is it L-shaped? You know you get those no, ones? No. No. Has it got... Now you're older, has it got a recliner function? No. No. And is it stuffed with feather or foam? Did we get a little puff with it? I can't remember. <laughs> Did I order... A, I can't remember if I ordered the puff with it or not. <laughs> we'll soon find out when delivery man comes. Hiya! <laughs> I'm glad you laughed. <laughs> can, um, we, can we keep that in? Yeah, it's fine. Can we? Yeah. I can't remember if I did get the puff, eh? Is it a puffet? It's not a puffet. It's, it's definitely puff. not a it's puffet. It's a poof, isn't it? A puff. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it's just not a puffet. Is it not? There's no accent on the it's E. It's just a puff. It? It's just a puff. What a weird name. It's a leg stat. What is it? Leg rest. Let's, yes. Yeah. Anyway, how's your week been? Uh, well, let's let's go back to previous weeks because we, we promised in our weekend release that we would talk about your uneventful, not really a thing. Oh, cheers. Excuse me! <laughs> You're the one that's like, oh, don't pick it up, don't make it a thing. I hosted my first dinner party um, last Friday. For in your new house. In my new house. Which, Gene Devers, can I say, is very nice. You've Thank made you. it, you, you were very worried because you've only been in there a month, just over a month. You're a bit worried, oh, it's not ready, it's, am I ready for guests? If you've done that in a month, I can't wait to see it in two months. Bless you. You were it really very kind, up actually. Together. You, said I'm, you said I'm so proud of you. I am proud of you. That's really kind of you. It's Thank nice. You. As I, I can't remember which of the reception rooms I said that to you in, but <laughs> I think it was the blue drawing room. Um, but it was it was nice. Uh, it was very nice. Uh, two floors as well. All right. Can, can we bloody dress out? Why don't you? Well, I arrived. I didn't know if you were top or bottom, but you go down in the in the basement to get in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm, yes, yeah. you do. Well, that's how you took it. Is that the tradesman's entrance? Uh, <laughs> that was the, that was was the, that was not... the entrance I was directed to. Yeah, the, there's two. <laughs> I'm not, I don't want to talk about this. You, very sweetly, you clearly know me so well. Mm. Uh, because I got this text going, if you're early, you can come. I was sitting in the pressure monitor. <laughs> I touched you at half six. You were due at seven. And I just knew you'd be hanging around. I'd found it, but it was a capital prep about 10 minutes away. and uh... I knew, so I just, I just had it. It was, a, call it a mother's intuition. <laughs> God, you're not my mother. Uh, no, about that, darling. Um, so I just, I just thought, oh, I'm going to text him now. And you went, you literally went, I'll be there in 10. <laughs> 
I'll uh, give you the grand tour. I like to get to places early so I'm not late. And also, we because we've been writing the book, uh, we had only a couple of weeks ago when we were writing about sort of entertaining things, I had said, and I've said this on this podcast before, it's, I've said it in all my books before, I would rather somebody was an hour late than five minutes early. So I thought I definitely can't turn up early, but you clearly knew that I was going to be um, lurking around the corner. Mm. So thank you. And then I got a little private tour, yeah, which was nice. And we had the same bed. <laughs> I didn't. I can't believe this. We I have totally any, forgot about that. That new bed that I ordered only at the start of the year because I broke it. I forgot. Same we, one. We've got the same bed. Yeah. Yeah. Yours is the size up from what we oh, have. Oh, shut up. What? <laughs> Yours is a three-quarter bed. Ours is just a single. No. Um, no, you've got you've got ever so slightly bigger bed. Thank you. Why well, I, I get so weird about stuff like this. I wanna... It's just your bed. I don't know, but... Oh. It's nice. Anyway, so there we go. It's, Did you have a good night? I had a... No, yes, it's unrelated to the bed. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I did have a very good night. Mikey had a very good night. Ben, did you have a good night? Yes. Did Kat have a good night? Diego yep. was there as well. Diego was there. All the gang, Chelsea and James, Maraid. Yeah. It was great fun. No, we had a, we had a really lovely time. Well, thank you. So did thank you, you enjoy... What was, honestly, what did you think of the chilli? I thought the chilli was lovely. Loved it. Mm. It's not my best, but it weren't my worst. Well, I thought it was lovely. Not as good, however. Oh, God. As your brown is. Jordan did his brownies for pudding. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got them. I've got some left over there for you. There you go. I mean, you just, th I mean, they, they sounded hard when you put them on the table, I'll, I'll be say, honest. Tim, Tim, that looks like I'm giving you heroin. <laughs> Not that I ever know, but that, that looks like I'm dealing crack. Oh, <laughs> Jordan, that's a door wedge. That's good shit, that's good, that, don't you? Uh, Jordan, that is solid. I think I'm a bit hard. William also said to me on the night. Just, the just listen of... to this. Don't do that to my brownies. You love my brownies. William also said to me the other night, I'd nipped out. They're still quite good. Are they? I'd nipped out. To, do you want one, Ben? I'd nipped out towards the end of the night. I'm cutting down, don't worry. And uh, William came out into the garden. No, and, and you are twisting my words. No, and said, and bear in mind, I'd done a chilli, I'd done wedges, I'd done garlic breads, and it was all. I come out, and William said, well, the brownies were delicious. No, but I wasn't saying that as if to go. You're I know you were. Everything else was I know shit. You were. I know you were. What did Take you think of? Me. What did you think of the casual setting? Because obviously the cutlery in the pot. The cut. There was a cutlery in the pot, and mm. I put everything out, and it was kind of healthy cells, weren't it? I didn't know if I was at your house or at Weatherspoons, but. Um... <laughs> No, you don't, you don't help yourself at Webster's Spring. That was a harvester. Oh, right. It's Toby a harvester. Carvery. A Toby Carvery. I quite liked it that it was... I like. I liked the vibe. It works for you. Yeah. Okay? I mean that in the nicest possible way. Yeah. If I, st I know it's the new Relax Me. Yeah. But if I did cutlery in a pot at mine, mm. even if I'm doing Come Around for Pizzas, I still think people would think I've lost the plot. No. But that's because it's me. Because it, Did you like it, Ben? I just thought it was chilled. Help yourself. Everyone getting up. and chilled, chilled. Yeah. Yeah. And you served it out. You served it out for a sort of buffet style, and we we helped ourselves on your on your breakfast bar. Oh, for God's sake! And <laughs> why don't you just post pictures up? Shut up! Oh, well, I have got a few. No, <laughs> Jesus! But no. Also, when I arrived early, you were incredibly nervous. I was uh, to the point where you went to go and get something out the fridge. I think maybe the might gin or something. You poured my gin. And then you noticed that you had, and I hadn't noticed, and I really am the sort of person that would notice, there was just a tiny speck on the fridge. Out came the fridge cleaner, out came the duster. We were doing a high buff polish all over the fridge. <laughs> a lot of people don't think we've talked about it before. I am like quite, I'm very clean and tidy. And I was in full Wendy North mode. Mm. All day I was in my leggings, my hair tied up. I think even Wendy North might not have mm. spotted that mark. I think you you take Wendy North to a new level. Marigold's on Whitney Houston blasting out at the smart speaker. <laughs> Graham! If you're gonna sit there, make yourself bloody useful. My mother used to put a no note in the sink. In oh, the so basin, actually. Use the sink. So she'd clean the downstairs cloakroom and then she'd put and she'd write on a post-it note cloak no. Room. You had a cloakroom? Yeah. What are you, a primary school? And she'd... It's <laughs> cloakroom. Did you have your pumps in there as well for a wet day? She'd put this... So we wouldn't be able to use that that basin. We'd have to go and use another basin because, you know, either guests were coming. Oh, so we'd, we'd always... And then I decided that actually she was getting through quite a lot of post-it notes and that was wasteful. So even age 10, I was quite environmentally... Um, 
uh, conscious. So I printed on a piece of paper, printed saying no, and then I got my laminating machine out, because obviously I had a laminating machine, and I laminated the note, and then she could just put that one in every time she kept it in the bathroom drawer. It? Yeah, she did. For oh, years. Bless her. But yeah, the no note. Don't use that basin. But anyway, thanks for coming. It was a good night. Did you, uh, yeah. Did I what? No, that's it. Ben, you had your hand up. What about that hummus? Oh, oh, yes. You were raving about the hummus. Everyone, I mean, I had a little bit, but I was outside with Marek. Don't, you'll make me sound posh. <laughs> but I, got I mean, you got it from a jar. I mean, let's, you hadn't made your own. No, yeah. It's, it, so I, I got this. I, do you know what? I only got it from Tesco. No, no, I shouldn't. I only got it from Tesco's, right? And oh, I just, everyone no, no, was stop, raving stop, on about pause, pause, it. Pause, 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 pause. I did some work for Tesco just before Christmas, and they don't like it when you say Tesco's. You've got to say Tesco. Tesco's. Well, I got it from Big Tesco's near me, <laughs> right? Because they apparently don't like it when you say Big Tesco. And what was the, <laughs> what was the brand of it, Ben? Can you remember? Everyone were taking pictures of it. It's in a big yellow tub. But your hummus, your hummus was lovely. And then after dinner, and after we'd helped ourselves and had the brownies and um, all that sort of delicious. Did you serve ice cream with the brownies? No, you offered, I think. Yeah. Did yeah, you not have no, it? No, I just no, because and the brownies were cold, so I didn't need cold and cold. If it was hot and cold. That would be fine. Ramona's. Ramona's. Ramona's? Yeah, ch check it out. It's in a big yellow tub. It's so good. It's, cr it's got a picture of Ramona on it. <laughs> what? If I weren't a bit piddly, I'd do some biting political satire here, but I'm afraid my brain isn't working fast enough at the moment. Anyway, carry on. Um, we then played a card game. Now, Jordan had said to us, on this very podcast, I've got the Traitor's card game. What Jordan meant is he's got a pack of cards. It wasn't a traitor's card game. We just played the traitor's card game. No, I do have the traitor's card game, the official one. Oh, right. But um, I, 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 I couldn't get my head around the rules. So I know how to play Mafia, which is the card game. It's basically the same thing. So we played, okay. we played Mafia. And my God. It got a bit... Three rounds of Mafia. Literally. It start, if, if you're listening now and you've got people over, play Mafia. Google how to play. So easy to play. It's basically traitors, but with cards around a table. It got heated. Everyone thought... I'm pointing at Ben going, you're a fucking traitor. You're a fucking... You're a traitor. I'm a faithful. I know you are, you weedy little bastard. <laughs> Proper screaming. It got so... I think there is a little bit of video evidence. You, was it you? No, you sent me the video of, of Ben and I having an argument. Oh, I can put it up if you want. Yeah. Put, yeah. Should we put it up? Yeah. yeah. yeah we we'll can put, put it up. up. Okay. Can I, yeah, because it's a video of me when I was a traitor saying, I'm 100% faithful. Should I play it out And here? I knew Ben was a traitor <laughs> because <laughs> I could... Yeah, play it now. So this was the game. It got really heated. Sorry. Where is it now? Here we go. I think you're a... Uh, why is Abba? Who, who put, who, <laughs> why is Abba on? Who were pissing around with playlists? It took me ages. That I hadn't touched. I hadn't. Touched. Oh, we put the traitors playlist on. I don't think. Give me a man, man after midnight. I can't I remember think that. We did. From... We put traitor. Anyway. I <laughs> can't really hear, can you? That's what the real Mikey sounds like. <laughs> You called him a filthy traitor. Okay. You're a traitor! You're a traitor! Okay, I promise. You're such a bad liar. Yeah, it was, uh, it got intense. I was a faithful all three rounds, but yet, particularly for the first two, because I wasn't saying anything, because you know my laissez faire attitude to parlor games, uh, I was just like, oh, whatever. And, We're and not every, into it. No, no, I am into it, but I like observing and participating, but not to the point where I have to sort of expend that much energy. And um, everyone was like, traitor, because you're not saying anything. I got called Wolf at one point. I've never been so offended <laughs> in all my life. <laughs> Were yeah. you a traitor at any point? I was a traitor, but got caught out pretty much first round. It was you and Mikey, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, but then we won. And then Ben and Kat were traitors together. And I, right. And I got voted out immediately at that round, and I said, "But Ben, I am not a traitor, but Ben and Kat are. Nobody believed me, and not... shock. Who were the traitors at the end? Mm. But it's, it's a good game. It's a good game. Yeah, I feel like Maddie. Mm. Can we also talk about Kat's impressions? They are phenomenal. She does the entire cast of The Traitors. She's a great Claudia. Admittedly, that's a physical one, and she has to pull a jumper up over her head. <laughs> um, she is 
such a good impressionist. She really is. Was she doing impression? Who else was she doing him of? She did. She does Maddie. She does Maddie. Meryl. Meryl. She did so many. She so <laughs> she does great input. Like as a fellow impressionist, I <laughs> I have to, you know, take my take my. <laughs> Take my <laughs> You're the John Culcher and Jan Ravens of our generation. As a fellow impressionist, <laughs> this episode's got to part. Yeah. Anyway, it was a lovely evening. Thank you very much for having us. No, thank you for coming. And now it's it my great. turn to have you. Yeah. Oh, also, I'll just say this. I think the wine let us down. I don't know. There was. A, I had. A, I opened a bottle of wine. It weren't for me. Oh really? But we were pissed. Were you pissed? Yeah, it all goes down the same order. Yeah, it I go I got back very late. You were you were on the wine as well mm. and the gins. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We got we got into bed at half past one. Did you? Yes. I we got into bed that. and we had to just check which bed we were in. Is this our bed or is it Jordan's? <laughs> <laughs> but it was our own bed because our bedroom walls are a very similar colour and we have a very similar headboard or slash bed. It's the same bed. <laughs> Well, it is the same bed, as yes. It, as if we've got the same bed. What are the odds of that? Same bed, same paint colour. Similar. Ever so slightly different, but to the naked eye, it looks the same. Okay. You've just got very good taste. Thank you. Um, can we also... Tra- and actually, something when I was coming round to your house... It's like through the pissing key, all this. <laughs> no, no, when I was coming round to your house, you don't have this yet. Maybe you're going to get one installed, maybe you're not. You know ring door cameras? Yes. Everybody seems to have them, particularly our generation now. And obviously, the you know... Very functional, but you know, there's a purpose. However, I don't have a ring doorbell camera because we have another video entry system that was sort of inbuilt, but I have had one in the past when I in my previous flat. I've suddenly realized you have to be careful because the moment that camera detects motion, it starts recording and it records sound. So, you know, when you go around to people's houses normally, you particularly if you're going with a friend or your partner, you're sort of you're chatting out. This is in a late night, or oh, yeah, yeah. oh god, I don't like that bay tree, or you know, that sort of yeah. thing. This is now all being recorded. Oh, god, yeah, you see a lot now. Of luckily, on Mikey and I arrived separately, so we, we I wasn't talking to anyone. But there have been lots of people's houses over the last year that I have arrived at, and I've had to go to my oh god, don't, don't criticize their curtains. It uh, Wendy would be a nightmare for that, yeah, neck curtains in this day and age. And Bloody, what is it, the 90s? From an etiquette point of view, this is very interesting because. You've got to, like, literally you are being recorded. So you have to say something nice or nothing at all. Oh, that's really good, Gene Deepers. Remember, mm. be careful of that. Say something like, what a beautiful area, yeah. even if it's not. It's yeah. Just because just they might check it back, because mm. I would. Yeah, you're right, you would. Yeah. Oh, it stinks of stale piss. Can you smell stale piss? Oh, yeah! Oh, we're so excited. <laughs> We've got some bubbly. Come on, let's get in. It's piss, in it? It's definitely piss. That dog, it's on its way out. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it's just, it's just again, it's a new etiquette dilemma. Just make sure you say something nice and positive when you arrive at people's Very houses. Good. And anyone arriving through my back passage, I have a camera up the back passage, and that records sound as well. So even though there's not a video door camera, there is a video camera. Can then, anyone go through your front passage? Well, they can try, but it's blocked off. Do you not have a front passage? Well, I do, but that you go up to Izzy and Dom and Ollie and Louise and everyone else that way. Who's there? Is he Dom, Ollie and Louise? And all the other flats. Oh, it's, it basically, you live in a student halls, don't you? I do not live in a student halls. I live in a very luxury Victorian terrace that <laughs> bears a similar resemblance to Cherry Tree Lane. Cherry Tree Lane? How vibes? <sighs> That's just, oh, it's like you don't know me. What's Cherry Tree Lane again? Someone is returning. Oh, Mary Poppins. Thank you. Is that Cherry Tree Lane? Yes. Is that where they live? Yes, Michael number 17, Cherry, Michael and Jane. Haven't had a Poppins reference for a while. Oh, so it's dead, isn't it? It's not dead, just the stage show. Oh, I wonder if anyone has any examples of their ring cameras and guests, or them themselves, and maybe they've been sent videos from friends of of them drunkenly staggering out of people's houses. Yeah. Or, oh, thank God we're gone, I thought we'd never leave. Or arriving at people's houses saying, oh... Yeah, that'd be good, actually. Send them in. I've, I've never liked Jordan. Yeah. That sort of thing. <laughs> Send them in. This is where Jordan says, yes, he does have a ring. Oh, my God, you don't have a ring, I do, do you? yeah. Mikey gave me a ring years ago for Christmas, but it wasn't the ring I was hoping for. What? A ring doorbell. Oh, oh. And, Ben, I, I did not mean that. Yeah, I forgot that. I meant ring. 
as in on your finger. And, uh, right, the... should we go to Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week? Go for it. What did one saggy boob say to the other saggy boob? I mean, can we do this? Can we? I'll tell you the punchline. Yeah, it's all above board. Okay. I'll tell you the punchline after the break. I'm going to have a brownie. Thanks for sticking with us, Gene Divas. Okay, so it's time for Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. What did one saggy boob say to the other saggy boob? If we don't get the proper support, people will think we're nuts. <laughs> Can we say that? <laughs> that's not. So a, I'm still eating that's a brownie. Not a cr- that's not across the line, is it? No. That's fine. It's from Dad Jokes. Have you got any more? Oh, that's my cleaning product that I keep Show me. highly recommending to you. Star Drops. White I've got vinegar. that. It's fantastic. Yeah. Good, but it makes your house smell like a chippy. You know what Star Drops so do also it. do? Go on. Pink stuff. You remember the pink stuff? Oh, I've got that. Yeah? Yeah, for me, I'll... Rub your pink stuff on the hob. Yeah. That's okay. nice. Mm. Um, Jordan, can I shock you with something? Go for it. Well, our fifth birthday is next month on the 20th of March. Have we been doing this for five years? Yes. Well, nearly. Four, uh, four years and 11 months currently. Really? We've got, we've got some very exciting plans on the way, it says here. I have absolutely no he idea. He hates it when we read the script and make it clear that we're reading the script. But look, Gene Divas, as ever, we need your help. Uh, we want to know your favourite moment from the podcast so far. So whether it's from me taking Jordan to a five-star hotel in Monaco. How to... many years ago was that? Oh, three. When uh, Ben got into a fight with a Trump supporter. <laughs> We'd literally <laughs> been there an hour. Literally been there an hour. Um, whether it's you making me do a shift in Greg's, we want you to let us know what your favourite sexist moment is. Your first pie in pasty in Burnley. Yes, when you yes we did the state visit to Burnley. Gay goes for me. Chomping on pork. I love oh that yeah, one. yeah, yes. that's from the early series. Um, you can head to sexedmyboss.com slash birthday, another URL, to submit your suggestions. <laughs> That's been done for the month. We'll reveal what we are going to do with them in the next few weeks. Is it our fifth birthday? It's our fifth birthday. Jesus. Oh, my God. And as you told us a few weeks ago, for your fifth anniversary, you get wood. You do get wood. I'm sure. Have we been on doing this five years? Yes. When it first went out? Five year. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I think so. We, we I think we're celebrating our birthday from the first... Transmission, as which it were. was in March, weren't it? Mm. I think on the twentieth. It was conceived in December. Then it popped out. It, it was conceived in December. God. Gosh, short, short conception or short, whatever they call it. Also, right, because people said that my voice is different in the first couple of ep- series. It was because I've said this was very heavily on the piss at the time. And we recorded episodes one, two, and three at the same time. And we recorded a lot of episodes in batches and chunks. Um, it's somebody, due to Jordan's very busy schedule at the Somebody time. sent me a DM saying, look, it's really freaked me out. Someone sent me a DM saying, look, um, I know you think this is mad, but the reason why your voice has changed is because <laughs> you've been abducted <laughs> by aliens <laughs> and they forgot to put the right voice box in. I've got the clips in. here if you want to listen to them. What? Here's, uh, here's clip one from the very first episode. Yeah, and, and now I'm thinking, God, have I been probed or anything like that? Okay, here's, here's clip one. Hello, I'm Jordan North. And here's his <laughs> clip from last week. Hello, I'm Jordan North, <laughs> and welcome to Help I Sex with My Boss. I don't sound like that. I don't have even... I changed? I have, right. <laughs> I'm just going to sit at my breakfast bar. I haven't changed. I have, right. It... At a quarter to one. My voice doesn't sound different. <laughs> I don't think it does, right. And I've not changed. You have just gone ever so slightly more northern. I've not changed. I just dress better, that's oh. all. I don't, like, I don't, Are you sure? I'm not saying I'm frigging Harry Styles, but I'm I'm like I dress a bit better than five years ago. Mm. I know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think is that does that sound twatty? No, it's just yeah. I've not been going. have changed. I just I'd like to think I dress a bit better. Yes. Okay. I've not changed. You haven't changed. You're still the same old brand new you. Oh, Camp Young Jordan. Oh, look at the mucking ear, Mum. <laughs> what are you on about? Oh, for... yeah. When you when you phoned up and said I need to leave your friend's sleepover or something, didn't you? Yeah. And that was oh, the birth of Camp Young Jordan. Camp Young Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bless. Um, anyway, Let's... right. What's no, coming up on the weekend release? No idea. I haven't recorded it. Let's go but to what... listeners. <laughs> Come on. This is this is... last week we did a short episode. This is dragging on now. Sorry, G and Divas. What? Want it short and sweet? Look at the producer's mouth. Not short and sweet, but come on. 
This one is from Tina with two E's. Dear William Jordan and producer Bat two E's. That's not a personal comment on her front. That's just, <laughs> she's. That's just how she spells her name. How does she spell the name? Tina. Oh. Double E. Uh, dear Jordan, William, and producer Ben, I've been with my wife for twelve. Oh. I've been with my wife for 12 years and we work together. However, for the last 18 months, we've had no sexual contact. And to top it off, I have seen messages between her and our boss, which they refer to each other as sexy and gorgeous. How do I broach this with either of them without losing the woman I love or my job? Should I just say nothing and hope that I'm reading too much into it? Thank you both in advance. Love the show and hope you can help. All the best, Tina. Got to hit this one head on, Tina, I think. A, you need a big, big chat. You need to bring up the lack of... uh intimacy in your relationship mm-hmm. and say, well, look, we've not had sex in ages. Can we start getting intimate again? And you definitely need to mention the text messages because that'll just eat you up inside and it'll go over and over and over and over in your head. You need to definitely... The thing it. I would query is, and I think you need to be careful... I mean, Tina, your points are all valid and I'm on your side. I have seen messages between her and my boss. How have you seen those messages? Where were those messages? Now, I'm not saying that they are entitled to send those messages because they shouldn't be if there is indeed a, um, you know, bit of a oh, an Tina. agenda there. But if you've always been looking at her phone, it's difficult to then flag that up because two wrongs don't make a right, even though her wrong is probably more wrong than your wrong. So if you have seen messages on, if she, if she knows you look at your her phone, let's say you're looking at a photograph and a message pops in at the top, let's say, I think that's fair enough because, you know, you were on her phone, she knew you were on your phone, fair enough. But I think you need to be a little bit careful about how you approach this from a messaging point of view because why have you seen those messages? And again, we're only going off what you've written in here. Yeah, it sounds like you're really going through it, Tina. So you just need to do a bit of a love island and say, can we have a chat and just get it all out? I know that's going to be hard. And you might, you, you know, you're probably not going to lose the love of your life, don't worry. But you need to say, I've seen these messages and just be honest and open. Maybe, hmm, I would maybe go for the first chat is, can we be more intimate? You know, is there anything that we can do? Can we try something new? Can we, is there anything? all out in one. Do that first and give that a go. And then if that doesn't work, then go back to the no, messaging. You need, to, you need to get it all out in one. You need to have a big chat. Mm. Definitely. Um... But yeah, that it, that's terrible, and uh, I'm sorry, Tina. So, um, give it a go, and if love is there, it should all be fine. Best of luck with Tina, and uh, let us know how you got on. Please do get back in touch. This one is from Annie. Dear Jordan, William, executive producer Ben, and Diego, how do I tell my neighbour to stop being sick in his garden? I should start off by telling you that I have severe. Emetophobia. I think that's people that are scared of being sick. Correct. My form tutor at school had that. Really? Because I was sick all the time. She used to go mad at me. I was a very sickly child. Why? I was banned from school dinners at St. James's Primary School in Burnley. What? Because I was always sick. The smell used to make me sick. So I had to go and eat my butties in a room on my own. What? (laughs) At that point, honestly. You want me to eat with other children, Mummy? (laughs) (laughs) Why are you turning me into... How has this role reversals happened? I did. The smell of the canteen used to make me sick. You know what I'm like now? I've got a bad gag reflex. (laughs) Carry on. Like now, if I start gipping at summer, you know what I'm like? Has that held you back in your media career? (laughs) No, so now, you know what I'm like? I'm like, oh. anyway, carry on. Um, it's so bad it controls my daily life, Annie continues, and three rounds of therapy hasn't helped. My current issue is that I have a horrible neighbour who frequently uses his back garden to be sick in. I cannot stand to hear it. Surely the other neighbours can't like it either, but being metaphobic, this very seriously ruins my day. Silly, I know, but I just can't help it. The anger is... I fear unreal. Why not do it in your bathroom when you're not affecting anyone? I just don't get it. I've tried passive-aggressively huffing, slamming windows and moaning loudly about how disgusting it is to hear, but it doesn't stop him. So my question is, how do I very politely ask him to stop being sick in his garden? At this point, I'm contemplating packing my bags and moving. I would also like to say I do genuinely understand he may have an illness or something that means he can't help vomit, vomit, but I can't just get my head around why you can't be sick inside your own home. I'd be so grateful for any advice. Love and best wishes, Annie. Annie, um, 
yeah, weird that he's just going out to have a casual sick. Who does that? It's all right to like have a cheeky faggot back garden and stuff, but not a cheeky spew. Yeah, not a cheeky spew. So, um, first of all, he said, "How do I politely ask him?" We'll do it like that. Politely ask him. Yes. I think you need to go around. And, and, also, and make him aware that you are a metaphobic. I was just gonna I was just gonna say that. Explain your situation. Everything you've just said to us there, say to him, look, this is a big fear of mine. It's you know affected my life on a daily basis. I've had therapy for it. So I hof- often hear that you're sick and I know you might have an illness. Everything you've said in that letter, hmm. say to this person. He's an, he's another human being. So hopefully on a human to human level, yep. he will um uh, he will relate and um so, uh, have empathy for your situation. Yes. But also, it is his garden. It's awful. It's grim. It's... Yeah, I'll use that and word if again. that don't work, just pop your head out a window and say, Stop being sick in your garden, you dirty bastard! And if you live in Burnley, that's how you do it. Yes. Uh, but if you're living in Isha, uh, then that's not how we do it. So, um, for example... Well, you could say grotty bastard. Right. If you get called grotty, that means... Yeah, let's roll. Let me do that again. Open window. Stop being sick in your back garden, you grotty bastard. Yeah, grotty's better than dirty. Right. Go well, for the, grotty. The decision is yours. Yeah. Um, can I just ask three rounds? Grot bag. Sorry to interrupt. Grot bags? Yeah. Did you get it. called a grot bag? No. Your dad used to come into your room. Fucking stinks in here, you grot bag. Open a window. Um, three rounds of therapy. Now, does that mean you've had therapy three times, so three one-hour sessions, or does that mean you've had three rounds as in... Do we, do we don't need to go into well, the no, end Because now. if you've had three hours of therapy, I would say probably... probably a little bit more for this. You're bugging me today. You're doing me head in. <laughs> why, why does that matter? <laughs> I'm just... I'm embellishing. Don't embellish. It's already gone on for about an hour and a half, this episode. Like, what was... Sum up your advice for Annie. Does it matter about the bloody... Does it really matter? I would say, well, I, OK, my advice recaps in a short, succinct way for people's benefit is it's his garden, it's awful, it's grim, but he's entitled to do that, as, as weird as it is. But yes, I do agree with Jordan, go and talk to him. But if you've only had three hours of therapy, go and have some more. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound rude then. Sorry. OK. Just... Sorry. Uh, accepted. This is from Catherine with a K. Dear William Jordan and EPP, A close friend of mine has made some new friends that I'm not a big fan of. They're into zodiac signs, crystal healing, tarot reading, etc. And personally, that just doesn't float my boat. But since she became friends with them... I went through a stage of that. What? Getting into all that. Did you? Yeah, I used to watch Colin Fry on Living. (laughs) Right. Did you ever watch Colin Fry on Living? No, but we'll finish Catherine's letter and then we'll come back to that. Some carrot tarts. Carrot tarts. Carrot tarts. What are they called? Tarot cards. Tarot cards. <laughs> <laughs> I got some from Bertie off my friend in college. But since she became friends with them, it's all she ever talks about. I don't mind at all what people believe in, as long as it's not spewing hatred. So when she told me that she and the coven, as they call themselves, cast a curse on a guy a couple of months ago who died in a car crash this week. Dark, I know. Jesus Christ. Bloody hell. I started thinking she may have joined a cult. Uh, It's deeply unsettling, and I don't know how much more I can do. Should I tell her that she's probably in a cult? Is there any saving this friendship from the icy grips of the witches she now calls friends? What should I do? Thanks in advance, Catherine. Oh, Catherine, that's awful. What an awful thing to put a curse on someone. I think you just slowly step away from that until she's ready to come back to you. Well, I would say, Catherine, is that you... um, should speak to your friend. Never, uh, never do that. It's either me or them. Because nine no, times out, if, that's not going to work. If a friend did that with me, you'd be like, "Well, you're putting me in a tricky situation here." But um, I think you need to definitely say, "I think this is a cult, and it's making me feel uncomfortable." Uh, and I'd, and you've just got to say, "I love you to bits. You're one of my best friends." But I'm worried where this is going. Mm. And sometimes you can't see wood for trees. No. So I think you need to tell your friend. I, I would, I no, I, well, you could do that. I would just slowly just step back. Would you? I think you yeah. need to explain to your friend. It's, again, I know it's very obvious advice, and I've said it before, but what you've said in this letter, say to your friend as well. Hmm. Do you believe in all that life? I did do tarot cards age 16 for about a month. Did you? I didn't know what I was doing with them. I, I just can imagine being a psychic, Sally. I tell you what. <laughs> I used to have them on radio all the time. I watched Live and Let Die. I was into my Bond film era. 
and I kind of like the idea. I You're so butch. Clearly, at times. like yeah, but I was more Jane Seymour than Roger Moore, and uh, I thought, oh, they look fun. And then I, I said to Granny, "Can I do a tarot card reading?" And that was the end of that. And I got rid of the tarot cards. Why? What happened? She didn't believe in any of that. Oh, did you no. give her a reading though? No, she wouldn't let me. Really? On. No. I don't believe in tarot cards. We can't do. We can't do. Presents. You dead grandmother. <laughs> Should we do a tarot card reader here? Yeah. Can we, let me, should I do? I remember because I used to. You haven't got any tarot cards. Did you used to read. You could do it with the brownies. Did you, did you, did you, did you, did you read, did you read, did you ever watch Colin Fry? The I don't know who Colin Fry is. Have you is. seen Phoenix Nights, the thingy? I'm getting the word. Nonce. Nonce. Yes, I know that. So, Clinton Baptiste. Mm, yeah. That, let me, they used to do. And Jordan's Colin, taking my hand. Colin Fry used to do personal readings. Oh, did he? Yeah, so he'd, he'd go into audience and he'd go, hi. So. Why is Jordan striking my hand? Um, I've got a lady here. Um, she's a very. Oh, she's a yeah. Okay, okay, my darling. Okay. <laughs> Patronising to them, wasn't okay, he? Okay, my darling. Um, mm. I think it's 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 an, an elder lady. She believes in the finer things in life, <laughs> and she's showing me. She's showing me, Le Le Cruzier. <laughs> Is that right? Le Cruzier. She pots. She left you a lot of. Yes, she did. She left you a lot of Le Cruzier stuff, didn't she? Or Le Cruzier. Le yeah. Cruzier. She left you a lot of Cruzier stuff. You've yeah. still got them, haven't you? Yes. She says she appreciates that you're looking after them. <laughs> oh, thank you. And she knows that you use them every day. In a ca okay, okay. That was her name, actually. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she, 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 can say, she says you use them every day in a kitchen and it makes her happy. Yeah. She also, she's showing me an, an etiquette book, a book on <laughs> manners. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Did she introduce you to etiquette? She might have done. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, sorry, she's a very persistent <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like her. <laughs> she's a very persistent lady. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she wants me to let you know. <laughs> Jordan's made himself laugh. <laughs> she wants me to let you know. <laughs> She doesn't like your husband. <laughs> How rude. She doesn't approve. Right. Thank I'll, you. I'll leave your grandmother's love with you, my child. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's not come too far. I could I could see the point <laughs> in your eyes where you had obviously made yourself laugh. <laughs> I went right. Mm. I'll tell you this. Okay. I went to um I was a DJ at an event for um a car showroom that used to sponsor my show like, in commercial radio. And we went, and there was like an open night. There was like mm. a casino there, and I was DJing, and there was like a magician. And there was a psychic there. Mm. And I, believe it or not, don't you... Like, I went first days watching Colin Cry and stuff, and then you get a bit old and think, oh, they're just telling them what they want to hear. And I had a friend's mum who was, um, got a bit too into him and obsessed and was going all the time, and I always felt sorry for him. I was like, I don't like this. feels like a bit of a... Anyway, each to their own. And this girl at this... Event I was at was like, come in, I really want to give you a reading. I'm, I was getting strong vibes or whatever. Jesus Christ. It was my grandma. I'm not even, and I don't believe in all, like it was. And I, I was sat there, literally my arms folded. Sitting. Sitting there. Mm. And she was like, I remember she said, I've got, um, I've got a lady here, an old lady, and she showed me her hair. She's always really proud. She used to get her hair done every week. She was like, there's a tall gentleman behind some of the stuff they said. Yeah. Really? Anyway. Well, there we go. Sorry. Cap one more letter. Go on. Did okay. We, well, did we give any advice for that? Uh, well, yeah, we did. Yeah, Catherine, I, I person, my advice, just slowly remove yourself from the friendship until she's ready to come back to you. Jordan's advice, tell her she's a bit weird. I'm sorry about doing that. Granny thing. and Mikey would have got on so yeah, well because they, they were both they were, were are both hypochondriacs, oh. so they could have talked about illness until the cows come home. Oh, okay. Yeah. Granny would have told you all the Latin names for every illness. I knew Granny had a decent stint on a building site, didn't she? <laughs> she had a what? Decent stint on a building site. Oh, did you grandma work no! on a building site? No! Oh. This is from Evangeline. Oh. What a market name. What a great name. I attended a teacher's, no apostrophe, networking event for our school and nipped to the loo before it all kicked off. Whilst I was relieving myself, I noticed an interesting advert on the back of the toilet, she means lavatory door, that was selling something we could use in our school. Being in work mode, I decided to take a photo of it and send it to my head teacher. 
I sent the photo and carried on as normal. It was only as I sat down for my tea and went back into my messages did I realise the photo was live. And when you press it, you can hear the gentle sound of me urinating. <laughs> what a cracking, belting. My head teacher has been very polite and hasn't acknowledged the sounds of me emptying my bladder. I don't know if that's because she genuinely didn't realise it was a live photo or if she's just trying to be polite. Should I tell her and try to laugh it off or pretend it hasn't happened and try to forget about it? Or should I leave the teaching profession altogether? Do live, can you see live photos on WhatsApp? No, not on WhatsApps, but on iMessage you can. Oh, thank God for that. Now, for those that don't know about live photos, there's a little icon in the top right, a little circly icon... And if you press and hold it, but basically when certain phones, I don't know if other non-Apple phones do this, but when you take a photograph, it records around that photograph and thus creates almost like a very short two-second film. Okay. So if you press it, it shows you everything else. And obviously, it's a bit like ring doorbells. It records the sound as well. Right. And every time everyone sends me a live photograph, I always press it. Um, I've never heard anything terrible. Um... What? A live photo. On? Um, on iMessage. Oh, okay. No, WhatsApp doesn't work. It doesn't, Who if, sends them on iMessage? Well, lots of people. It must be meta money sending money. On iMessage, but it works exactly in the same way. Yeah, but it charges you, doesn't no, it? No, it doesn't. No, if only, only if it goes green, it charges you. If it goes blue, it doesn't. Excuse me, was that my tummy? <laughs> that was your stomach. Oh, God. Um, Evangeline, anything. I wouldn't say anything because you don't know that your head teacher. That's weird, that. I should have had my ready break 25 minutes ago. <laughs> That's your body telling you. The, foot, the body is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> the body is amazing. All right, OK. At the time of recording, it's 25 past 10. I always have my ready break at 10. That's my, honestly, Not a lot of people know this about me, but I have my ready break at 10. That's absolutely fascinating, the body. It never seems to... That was my body, like, saying, come on, you need your ready break. <laughs> So, eventually, <laughs> I would say that uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bother saying anything. Again, this is a pretend not to notice. If you make a thing of it, it becomes a thing. So, I wouldn't say anything to your head teacher that you have sent a photo of you urinating. But maybe in future, you're just going to deactivate that live photo. When you're going to send it, you just touch it so it doesn't send mm. it as a live photo. Touch the top right corner and then send. He might be into that. Hey. Could get a promotion. Right, come on. We need to wrap up. Come on. Um, very chaotic episode today. I, I can't even remember starting. Like, what day is it? I don't know. It's a Tuesday. Uh, remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube every weekend. And you can get us all week on your socials. So the video goes up on YouTube on the Sunday. Yes, and uh, we, we're across your TikToks and your Instagrams. Keep a look out for some uh, We're at Sex with My Boss, and we'll be back on Friday. Goodbye. Goodbye.